So one of the earliest suprachoroidal implants is what's called the Solex gold microshunt. And in theory, it made a lot of sense. You take these two thin gold plates uh, and you sandwich them together with little channels in between them. And the idea was that the body shouldn't really react to gold. It's pretty inert. Um, and you would place this shunt right here in the angle in the suprachoroidal space. And fluid would come in from here and then out these little pores. You see these little channels here. And it would allow fluid to, to just flow out. And in theory, because the body doesn't react to gold as much as it does to other types of metals, uh, it shouldn't scar down. And you shouldn't get fibrotic tissue plugging up these, these channels. Well, you know, just as the theory of argon, laser, trabeculoplasty, and Karn's original desire uh, for trabeculectomy didn't quite pan out, uh, neither has this panned out. The, the gold shunt has really been unimpressive. Uh, only a modest IOP lowering, uh, medication reducing at best. So you might get some patients off of medication, but it's unlikely they're going to get a big pressure reduction. Benefits seem to be time limited, so eventually it does. These channels seem to get plugged up. And once they get plugged up, you lose the effect. Uh, so there's a very high rate of failure. And they've actually had some that have been explanted. So they've gone back in, taken them out, taken a look at them under the microscope, and seen that, yeah, the body, you know, we may value gold, but the body doesn't seem to really <laughs> value it as much as we do. So what else could we do? Well, um, there's a company that has created a silicon material. So instead of using gold, they use silicon. You, know, you might say, well, silicon, you know, silicon isn't that somewhat pro-inflammatory. Well, certain types of silicon you know, can be. Um, but this, this particular silicon biomaterial, they've created these tiny little micro pores in it. And let me show you, the, the procedure's a bit involved here. Uh, so it remains to be seen whether this is going to become really popular because all of the focus in glaucoma at this point seems to be, you know, how fast can I do it? Uh, can I do it without creating a scleral incision? But so what you see here is, and this also is, is going to make most surgeons kind of queasy because you see what's happening here. You've got this flap, and now he's freehanding it right into uh, the suprachoroidal space. So he's cut down to the choroid, and at least when I was a resident, if we ever saw choroid, our heart stopped, right? I mean, it's just, <laughs> and he just stuck this, this device into the choroid, you know, creating a potential space, which, uh, you know, again, I see choroid a fair amount doing canaloplasty, but I, this, would, this would make me a little bit nervous. So now he's going to gently, delicately pass the star flow implant between the sclera and the suprachoroidal space. So now the, um, uh, the keratome has just been used to create an incision underneath the superficial flap into the anterior chamber. And what's going to be done is this tag here is going to be placed in the anterior chamber. And then the flap will be placed back down. So this star flow device with these micro pores will allow fluid to flow from the anterior chamber through these micropores into this suprachoroidal space here, right? So it's a pretty, pretty neat idea. Um, but again, the question is, even if it works, is this something that's going to take off? Because I'm going to show you now some things that I think are really neat. Okay? This here is the iStent Supra. <coughs> Uh, it's not yet available in the U.S., and I may not be a fan of the eye stent, what I showed you earlier as far as the trabecular micro bypass, but I'm really excited about the eye stent supra and another one that I'll show you called the Psypass suprachoroidal implant because these are just simple, elegant, uh, fast, and they seem to work. So the eye stent supra uh, is basically a, a small tube 
the a special uh, material here that would go into the suprachoidal space with a titanium collar here. And so far, the initial studies have been impressive. When these have been implanted, either alone or at the time of cataract surgery, at 12 months, one study showed a pressure reduction of 20%. Well, that's pretty good. Another study at 18 months showed an almost 50% reduction in pressure. So somewhere between 20 and 50%, I'll take that. Now, so here you're going to see why this compared to the star flow is so exciting. <clears throat> so what we see here, uh, and this is uh, Dr. Jose Belda, is a gonioscopic view. And he's inserting it right now, right now, into the angle there. So little device, and there it is, bam. You can see the collar sticking out. That's titanium collar. The rest of it is in the suprachoroidal space. So whereas the star flow required cutting down, you know, <laughs> putting something down, waving it along the suprachoroidal space, uh, the ice tint supra just injected into that space. And so this is uh, really a, a very elegant device. There's also a competing device. And uh, it's called the SciPass MicroStent. It's also a tube. This tube has little, little micro holes in it. But it's the same idea. You can see here's the angle. There's the iris. And you just shove it into the suprachoroidal space. Right? I mean, it's really, it's, it may be elegant. But what you're doing is shoving it into the suprachoroidal space. <laughs> so um, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small space. Uh, so then the, uh, the other remaining devices are